I do regret decluttering. I don't know. Time is truly a farce. It's an illusion. It does not exist. Hello. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. That was super sweet of you. Oh my goodness, what an exciting video I have for you today. But first, let's talk about my accessories. Yes, you know, I feel like I haven't been rocking the stars and moons lately, which is unusual for me because I love rocking stars and moons. I've got my little star and moon earrings here from Mossy Bean. You know, I got my little star face stamps and I'm tying it all together with my freak Virgo shirt. I love this shirt. You guys know I love to scream about how I'm a Virgo. I actually got a comment from somebody one time being like, oh my gosh, I love everything you talk about except for the astrology stuff. And I was like, honestly, fair. But at the same time, am I going to stop? No. Why? Because I'm a Libra rising and I don't like to follow rules. But that's not what this video is about. You did not click on this video to find out my rising sign. And if you did, oh my gosh, let's, let's talk in the comments. What's your rising sign? I love finding out people's rising signs. Oh my gosh, it's so interesting. I love astrology so much. Now, you clicked on this video because you, like me, have an interest in revisiting makeup that I decluttered last year. So, for those of you who don't know about my YouTube journey, so I started a YouTube channel in late 2018, kind of was on and off with it in 2019, but started taking it serious last year in 2020. And one of the first series I did on my channel was decluttering videos. You know, I knew they were popular. I figured I would try my hand at it. So I did kind of a lot of decluttering videos throughout 2020, at least the first half of 2020. In 2021, I've just been doing decluttering videos whenever I have like a good bout of stuff. I haven't been doing whole series or anything, but I recently did a decluttering video and it caught me thinking, what if I went back and revisited some products that I decluttered in early 2020 and I can tell you whether or not I regret decluttering those things whether I feel good about it, you know, just, just looking back at old makeup. It's wild to look back at things that I decluttered just one year ago. I think we all know that a lot can change in a year. 2020 has taught us that much for sure. So if that sounds like a topic that is interesting to you and you want to revisit some makeup that I decluttered in 2020 with me, then I encourage you to please subscribe and keep on watching. It's coming at you, right? now. Okay, so like I was saying in my intro, 2020 was the first year I took YouTube seriously, and one of the first series I did was a decluttering series, and I split it up into parts. I was going category by category. I think I released like five videos, but yeah, in my eyeshadow palette decluttering series, I was surprised. I know it's wild. It's only a year ago. I already forgot what I decluttered, but I decluttered quite a bit of ColourPop palettes, and I thought it was interesting because I, if you're not new to my channel, you know I tend to uh, rag on ColourPop quite a bit for good reason, might I add. I give constructive criticism to ColourPop, okay? And they're a brand I'm not currently supporting. If you're curious for more information on that, I'll link my Brands I'm Not Supporting video down below for you, because I get a lot of questions about why I'm not supporting ColourPop. But last year, around this time, I started decluttering like a ton of ColourPop palettes. I decluttered the Give It To Me Straight palette, which was kind of like this mauve rosy, neutral palette. I decluttered my Double Entendre palette, which was like basic as basic can be, neutral palette. I decluttered my Sweet Talk palette, which was this very like springy release that they did with lots of pinks. It had a super shock in it. That was like one of the first times they put a super shock, super shock shadow in one of their eyeshadow palettes. And then I decluttered the Mar palette, which they did like this Soul Imar collection. That was actually really cute. The Mar I think was the ocean one. And then the Soul palette was the sun. And I decluttered the Mar palette. And then I also decluttered the Makeup Shayla Under Construction palette, which I thought this was all very interesting that I decluttered all of those at once. I, I don't know, it didn't click at the time that I decluttered like mostly ColourPop palettes, but I feel like last year is when I started really getting a feel for formulas. Because I think when you first start getting into makeup, you know, I really only started getting into makeup at the end of 2017. So 2018 and 2019 were my exploratory years, and I still didn't even really wear a ton of eyeshadow until probably 2019. I was just wearing eyeliner in 2018. But 2020, I really started to get a good feel for formulas, and I started to realize that ColourPop's formulas just weren't cutting it for me. The mattes blend fine, when they're lighter colors. That's what I find with ColourPop. Whenever there's like a very neutral pale shade, those are relatively easy to blend, but the deeper the mattes get, 
the more difficult they tend to get to blend. And I also find that they tend to put a lot of sequins in the deeper shades too, the deeper mattes that's supposed to make them easier to blend. That's what ColourPop has said, the sequin shades are supposed to make mattes easier to blend. My response to that is always though, just like make a better matte formula. Why do you have to put sequins in the matte formula to make it better to blend when you could just go back to the lab, which we all know is like very easy for them to do because like their whole facility is like in the same thing. Isn't that the whole thing with ColourPop is that it's all like, it's very easy for them to get down there into the lab. Just make a better matte formula, you know? I could scream and shout about that all day. But I thought it was interesting that I decluttered all of these palettes. I felt like it would be interesting to note because I, I do feel like I can give off the impression a lot of times that I just rag on ColourPop for no reason. But as you can see from here, I have tried quite a bit of their catalogs. So I have quite a bit of experience with the formula. But one thing I will say about all of these palettes that I decluttered is that I miss when ColourPop was original. Like, even though I didn't like these palettes and I ended up decluttering them, looking at all of these palettes made me very nostalgic for like 2019, 2018 ColourPop because they used to still do collabs. Obviously, you know, I decluttered the Makeup Shayla collab, but they also did so many more original palettes at that time. The Give It To Me Straight palette, you know, granted I ended up decluttering it, but that was a cute palette at the time, you know? It was kind of a nice alternative to modern renaissance without being like a total and complete dupe, but had similar mauve tones. The Mar palette, oh my gosh, the Mar palette was beautiful. I actually kept a couple of shades from that that I still have in a singles palette. The shade El Rey in the Mar palette palette. Oh my gosh, that's such a beautiful shade. It was such a beautiful peachy shimmer. Oh my goodness. And it had that beautiful sea foam green, the deep blue. That was a beautifully curated palette. And it was totally original. It wasn't a collab with an influencer. It wasn't a collab with an intellectual property. And I just, I really miss when ColourPop used to do that. I know that they're just going with the trends and that there are a lot of brands collaborating with intellectual properties right now, but I do wish they would get back to their roots, you know, get back to the originality. If you're interested in hearing me talk more about the evolution of makeup collabs, I will put a card on the screen and link my video down below because that is a topic I could really go off on and I have. But yeah, looking at all of these eyeshadow palettes that I decluttered from ColourPop last year just made me very nostalgic for the old ColourPop and I hope they get back to their roots. Okay, so this next product that I decluttered in 2020 that I kind of regret but I also don't, ugh, it's complicated. It's the Fenty Matchstick in the shade Confetti. So this is the first product I ever bought from Fenty. So Fenty launched in 2017, right around my birthday. So being that it launched right around my birthday, I decided to treat myself to a Fenty product. You know, as a birthday present, like I said before, the end of 2017 was right when I was getting into makeup. So I would buy myself little things, little like random makeup items here and there just to try stuff. And for some reason, I decided that this glittery purple highlighter stick would be a good purchase for me. I, do, I, I don't know. Here's something you need to understand about my personality, and I'm gonna bring astrology back. It's gotta be a Sagittarius moon thing because I'm very spontaneous with my makeup and fashion purchases, sometimes to a fault. Granted, I've been better lately. I'm on a makeup low buy this year. I'm doing very well, but I can at times be almost spontaneous to a fault. Like I'll see two items, right? Like I'll use clothing as an example. I was shopping and I saw these two bags and one of them was just like a black crossbody bag, you know, very good for every day, had lots of pockets in it, you know, just a very practical bag. And then the other bag was this leopard print suede chain bag that had like a very complicated opening and no pockets and no zippers and do you want to guess which bag I bought? Yeah, I bought the leopard print bag and no, I don't know where it is right now. It's probably in the back of my closet. Hopefully I'll find it since we're moving. All of this to say, I tend to be very spontaneous with my uh, style purchases. So yeah, I bought this matchstick as like my first high-end highlighter ever and I didn't use it all that often. But the reason that I didn't use it all that often was obviously I was just getting into makeup. It was a very glittery purple highlighter. I liked to wear it when we went out. Do you guys remember going out? Oh, I miss going out. <laughs> when we used to go out to dinner and stuff or con 
concerts, I would wear that highlighter because it was a very fun, it was like a cool like party times highlight. It was really fun, but the reason I ended up decluttering it is because the Fenty Matchstick formula is very dry. Like, uh, granted I've only tried the highlighter, I have heard the same thing about their contour and concealer sticks and bronzer sticks, but like I said, I can only speak to the highlighter, but I will say this highlight was very dry pretty much from the start. You had to really like rub it on the back of your hand to warm it up and then go in with your fingers to get it on and even then it would look just a little bit dry on the skin and I just discovered formulas I liked better after that, you know? I tend to be more of a powder highlight person nowadays anyways, unless it's doing like a, you know, like a glow by auric type of thing where it's like under the foundation. But yeah, I just kind of grew out of that formula, but I do still miss it. I do still wish I had it for whatever reason, just cause the packaging is very beautiful. It was very pretty. But yeah, I guess I don't really regret decluttering this. I just miss the time in my life where I could just pop into a Sephora spontaneously, buy a purple glittery highlighter, and wear it to the bars at night. You know, so I guess I'm more nostalgic for that than I am regretting decluttering this. But man oh man, what a, what a fun memory lane to walk down together. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> All right, speaking of not very practical highlighters, let's talk about a cult favorite. Was it ever really a cult favorite? What do you call it when everybody wants it, but then everybody gets it, and it's just kind of like, okay, I don't know a word for it. It's the Farsali Jelly Beam Highlighter. I bought the Farsali Jelly Beam Highlighter on New Year's Eve after a couple of drinks in 2019 because I had been eyeing it for a long time and obviously you guys know everybody wouldn't shut up about this highlighter. And I mean it in a nice way, you know, I was just very intrigued by it. I looked at it at Sephora a few times and I think they had a sale. It was like a post holiday sale or something. So I got it for half off and uh, I gotta say this was not worth the hype not worth the hype at all this is something I could tell immediately the first time I put it on and put it on my face I was like oh it's not doing what I thought it was gonna do it was very dry I thought it was gonna be dewy you know it was a jelly highlight it definitely gave a beaming highlight but it was um, it was too much it was impossible to blend out no matter how little you use it just it never looked right on my face you know and it might have just been a me thing I definitely was not rocking like a full face glam at the time by any means so maybe it just wasn't meant for like my tinted moisturizer vibe that I was going for at that time but it just it really did not live up to the hype for me and I feel like uh, after 2019, I feel like it was like 2020, January 1st, everybody just stopped talking about those highlighters. They stopped showing up in all of the Instagram tutorials. They stopped showing up in people's YouTube favorites. They just stopped being talked about. And you know, I think it was just a trend. I think it was something very trendy that everybody wanted to get on with the jelly highlighters. A couple of other brands hopped on the bandwagon. I know e.l.f. did a jelly highlighter. I think Almay did one. Remember Almay? I know, wild. But yeah, I think jelly highlighters were just a trend and it's a trend that we have moved past and I definitely don't regret decluttering this highlight. I actually found it last night when we were packing stuff to move. I had this whole box of makeup that I meant to actually declutter that I never actually threw away and I was telling my boyfriend before I opened it, I was like, this is about to be a science experiment because this was a liquid. But then I opened it up and it was fine. It was just all dried up. So if you're wondering what a jelly highlight looks like after being open for over two years, it just dries up. So I guess that tells you how drying it was on the face because it never stayed liquid. I don't know if that actually tells you anything. I am not a scientist, but yeah, the Farsali Jelly Beam highlighter is definitely something I do not regret decluttering. Oh wow, I got a lot of highlighters on this list. I did not mean to do that. Apparently I decluttered a lot of highlighters last year at this time. So another one that I actually do regret decluttering is the Burt's Bees, I think it's called All Aglow highlighter stick, the Burt's Bees highlighter stick. So I bought this because I was trying to find a dupe for the Glossier Halo Scale. 
Haloscope, Haloscope, Holoscope, I don't know. Does anybody know? I was trying to find a dupe for the Glossier highlighter stick and I figured this one looked the same. Honestly, that was that was really all I was going off of. I didn't know anything going into it. And it wasn't all that much cheaper though. That's what frustrates me about Burt's Bees makeup is that it's always the section I'm most attracted to at the drugstore. I don't know what it is about Burt's Bees. Ever since I've been very young, I've been very attracted to the branding. I think it's the bee stuff, the little honeycombs on everything. Ugh, it's so cute. But anyways, this was still like $12 and the Halo Scope Okay, it's like $22. Okay, so $10 difference. I'm rambling too much about things that aren't important. I really liked this highlighter stick. I'm not sure why I decluttered it. I think it was a little too subtle for me at the time. I think that might have been my reasoning for decluttering it. It definitely had a little less shimmer in it than the Glossier Halo Scope did, but I feel like nowadays the way I do my highlight, I would kind of like to have an option like that. I liked how hydrating it was. It's like, but at the same time, would I really wear that? Because here I I am wearing a powder highlight today. I don't know if I would still wear it. Again, I think I have some sort of strange drawnness attraction to the Burt's Bees packaging that just makes me want to buy everything from them. They have a couple foundations that I'm always so curious to try, but then every time I see a review, people are like, no, get it out of here. Do you guys have any products from Burt's Bees that I should try? I tried one of their blushes once, hated it. Get it out of here. Toasted cinnamon can kick rocks, in my opinion. But uh, that was when Kathleen Lights used to hype up a lot. So I tried it and it was like way, way too pigmented, looked straight up orange on me and not in a cute orange blush way in like an orange bronzer way. Not cute at all. I didn't even like the formula. It was very difficult to blend. So I know I don't want to try their blushes, but if you have anything else from Burt's Bees that you think I would be interested in, uh, I'll be pretty easy to convince to buy it because I'm, I'm very into their branding. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I have my own Burt. Could it be? Bert? He's sleeping under a chair right now. This is my Bert. He's my, my sweet little Bertram Beans. I love him so much. He's so nervous about moving, you guys. He thinks that we're leaving him as he keeps seeing the suitcases. He thinks we're going on vacation. He doesn't know he's coming to. Oh, the poor Bean. But uh, that's not what this video is about. I somewhat regret decluttering the Burt's Bees highlighter stick, but I'm intrigued to try more things from them. And maybe I'll try it again. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I, I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments. Okay, and the last thing I want to talk to you about today that I do regret decluttering. I don't know. I can't tell if I regret decluttering this. I feel like I found a better version of this. It's the Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer in the shade Palm Beach Ready. And the reason I liked this so much was because it was the first time I ever found a bronzer that the tone looked good on me, that the tone was not orange. The tone of this bronzer, how many times can I say tone? Oh my goodness. The tone of this bronzer was a more red toned. I don't think that's the right way to describe it. It didn't look orange on me. And if you were somebody who is as pale as I am and has cool undertones, you know that getting a bronzer to not look orange on you is like just almost impossible. It's not, I have found good ones since then, but this was the first bronzer I ever found that didn't pull orange on me and I was just like, my mind was blown. I couldn't believe it. And the reason I decluttered it was because it just was too shimmery. Too shimmery to the point where where I would tilt my face, it would look like I had highlight here. And as, as we know, we like the highlight to be on our cheekbones up here. And sometimes we like a glowy blush, but this wasn't just a glowy bronzer. It was like straight up highlight. Like this bronzer probably would have made a beautiful highlight on somebody with a deeper skin tone. But because I was trying to wear it as a bronzer and I was putting it in the bronzer spot, it just didn't look good on me. But I have found a better version, like what I wanted that bronzer to do in another drugstore option. So I would like to show that to you now. The Milani Baked Bronzer in the shade Glow, to me, is everything the Wet n Wild color icon in the shade Palm Beach Ready should have been, because it's still a very glowy bronzer. It's got this beautiful marbling in it, and it has these little flecks of gold in it, but it won't show up like glittery on your face or anything. I should have worn it today, that's okay but I'll try to, oh, you can see there's like a sheen on my fingers. You know what, I'm not wearing a lot of bronzer and maybe this is a mistake, but I'm happy to make mistakes for you guys. 
So I'm wearing a little bit of a matte bronzer right now, but I'll put some of this on just to show you how the tone is so nice. I don't know, is it even showing you anything? Maybe. But yeah, the tone of this bronzer is just so, so beautiful. It's the same tone as the Wet n Wild one, but it's not a straight up highlight. It's also huge. I love the size of this bronzer from Milani. The only thing is they absolutely need to expand the shade range of this product. It's a pretty abysmal shade range. They only have like three shades. So Milani, please, please make more shades because it is so, so beautiful. I love it so much and it's a nice affordable option at the drugstore. So yeah, I don't really regret decluttering the Wet n Wild bronzer, but it was just, it was such a good discovery. It opened a door for me. It showed me that bronzers didn't have to pull orange on me. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Alrighty, and with that, we have reached the end of the video. I had so much fun revisiting makeup I've decluttered with you. Like I said, I made a ton of decluttering content in early 2020, so I can definitely do another one of these videos. If you liked it, of course. If you didn't like it, we'll never talk about it again. I won't even think about it again, but I personally had a very good time. I think it's fun to look back at makeup that you decluttered because it's so easy to forget. Like I was looking back at these old videos and I was like, I had that product a year ago. I feel like I haven't seen that in years, but time is truly a farce. It's an illusion. It does not exist. Like I said, 2020 has taught us that time does not exist. So yeah, sometimes it's nice to have a reminder that time is in existence and is relevant. So yeah. Oh my goodness, I've been, we've been packing, I'm so tired. But uh, look, I cleaned my desk. If you missed that video, I did a whole video cleaning and organizing my makeup desk. It's very satisfying. Definitely go watch that video to see the horrifying before, but the after is so, so, so satisfying. But I thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and they're always just as fun as this one. Say goodbye to this apartment because this will be the last video I'm filming filming here. Everybody say bye studio apartment. Thank you for serving us well. We will see you later. Good luck with your next tenants. But I uh, yeah, check out my description box for all the makeup I'm wearing. Also, I have a bunch of Black Lives Matter resources and resources to support the Asian American community. So please click on those links if you haven't yet. And I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a new apartment and in the next video. Ah, exciting. Okay, bye.